My name is Matt, welcome back to the shop, and uh, this is 159, we are so close. How close, you ask? You didn't ask, but we've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 to go. 6 to go, which if we do 2 per episode, all of these are really short, apart from the clutch replacement, which is going to be a banger. That, uh, that'll take me about 2 hours, I'm sure it will. Um, so we've got what, this one, this one, that's 1... Two, three, four, five. Probably five, maybe six videos in this series, and then we're done. Then I'm done. Whew! It has literally been a year has been doing this, but there are 170... It says 160... It says 100, 176 videos, so it is a lot to go through. Although two are missing, so 174. Any road, let's just get on with it. These ones are really, really exciting. Vinsaki. <laughs> Sounds like it belongs in Jackie Brown. Oh my god, he's got a blanket that matches his mug. How do you pull that one off? Oh, I'll move that vice again. <laughs> They're just bits of studding that he's got a, a, a nut on the end of. <laughs> Bizarre. Right, good morning. Welcome back. Okay, now if you've been following this build, you will know that this is the last final piece of paintwork today. I've got to paint the top of the tail unit. The tail unit was a complete remake of the original large one that I did. It was something I decided to redo completely, and this is the final thing to paint it all black, to match the rest of the bodywork, and once it's dry, bolt it on for a stand back to see if that look is how I wanted it to be. Pretty much think it is, but hey ho, still got to get it painted yet, still got a long way to go to get that perfect finish so that it matches the tank. And the perfect, the tank isn't perfect, we've seen it, we've seen close-ups, it's shite. The rest of the paintwork at the same standard of smoothness, satin. Oh, standard. <laughs> Paint cannot be made good if it ain't good, so let's hope for a good finish today. Right, it's enough chat, let's get stuck in. You gotta remember, right? He knows what it looks like because he sees it. He's like, "Oh shit! Don't, don't do a close up of that one." Right, first task: preparation. Got to make that a bit smoother than it is. Right. But I thought you did that last time. I thought it was spot on, ready for Mackie to do his wizardry stuff. Now, and also, gonna give that silver in there a little buff and see if it comes out a little bit shinier than it already is. It's all right as it is, but a little more is better. It's all right as it is, so... Oh, look, it kind of showing you, but not. Oh, that was... Is that a massive bit of oversprit? Look at that. <laughs> uh, skilled, crazy skills. We're rubbing back through to the primer again. Are you kidding me? This is the fourth time this has been sprayed. Wow. It just goes straight through it again. You spray at 400. Sati is stroking his hands. We know that he has no nerve endings in his fingers because he goes, oh, it's, oh, oh, oh. it's like the, the painting whisperer. Oh. oh, oh, like he's flicking it off. And then he goes, perfect. Then sprays him. We go, no, it's not. <laughs> oh, it's covered in pinholes. Just 
randomly there. Now, you can place your bets at home. Place your bets. Look how much finesse he's, he's really taking his time here. Is it going to be spot on? Or is it going to be, oh my God, what the hell is that? Why is the half a crocodile in your paintwork? Right, okay, a couple of things that I'm probably going to get in the comments. I'm gloving up now for the last scratch over with paper. I'm going to use a thousand grit paper for the last final sand over. Uh, the reason I used bare hands to do it so far was that you can feel so much more. You truly can. If you've ever done your own wet sanding. I don't believe you. You'll know that that lovely feel. I don't believe you can. You get on the watery surface with your naked fingers. You can feel every little imperfection. You can deal with it. You can feel it. Feel for the next one and deal with it. You can take your time. This is taking two hours to get to this point, and it feels lovely now. But you cannot feel those imperfections when you're doing it with gloves on and latex. So in this instance, I've done the bare hands. I've got 99% of it done. This is just now going to be a final sand over with some thousand grit. So to answer that too, because there's loads of you said in the past you shouldn't be using a thousand grit for the final sand before painting. That's a polishing paper, uh, etc. But remember, the reason I'm doing this, it's worked for me. It was advice from Milo years ago. Thousand grit or even 1200, if you can be careful with it. And that. What? But Milo, some dead guy who did crazy shit and we couldn't really see his finishes. Right, so it's not like it's not like everybody understands that this is the Max Verstappen of bloody painting, right? Oh, he said it, and I'm following his advice. But the people who are telling you don't do that are paint sprayers. You've deleted them all and you've blocked them all, but they are professional paint sprayers. They are telling you stop doing that. You're a retard, and it's like, <laughs> look, look. Let me just tell you something, lads. Let me just tell you something. I've done it before. I'm the one with the channel, you aren't. So what do you know, right? You've seen my results, and that's the problem, Dale. Yeah, we have. But you've seen my results, um, Milo. That gives you a... Basically, I'll blame Milo, but it's my fuck-up. Super fine finish when you come to paint. You need that with satin and matte paints because you cannot correct them or buff or polish them afterwards. How they come out of the gun or... But he seems to think that the reason why you polish these things or whatever is just because, oh, it's imperfections. No, these are... Th what we can see in your, yours is surface imperfections, i.e. pinholes, chasms, pinholes and debris and shit falling into the paint. That's got nothing to do with what paper you use. That's to do with piss-poor preparation and piss-poor practices when you're doing it. So guess what you get? You get piss-poor. doesn't matter what you want to say after that, it's piss-poor. Finish, flatness, surface, texture, anything. It's all piss-poor. Shite. What can is how they remain. So in this instance, I'm going to use the thousand grit because I've used it in all the other pieces of bodywork. It's not been any problem at all. It has to look at the state of them. Why are you rubbing this down again? Because it's crap. And for those who might think that then you don't get a proper key to the paint and it can lift off in the future, well, I've never had that happen. I've been using tough paint for many years. It's been okay. No, you haven't. This is the first time you've ever used it. And the thing is, what do you do? You sell it on. And look what happened. This bike, you got rid of it straight away. And everyone went, that's junk, that's junk, that's junk. And then when you finally get it back four years, 1,500 miles later, four years later, the tough back is just all it's fallen to pieces. The tough black is shite. So, you see, this is the thing. This is... What the bloody hell is that? This is the problem. We've got video evidence here. Of the, we're in the future now to this, and we can see you're just talking shit. But the, the people might say, yeah, but this is ages ago, Matt. It's not the way the internet works. Do you think that if if do you think that if video evidence came out right now of Johnny Depp beating the shit out of Amber Heard, they'd just ignore it, going, well, that was the past. We dealt with it in the past. No, it's not the way. It's not the way the world works. Evidence is evidence. So far, if I find that it is, then I'll modify my approach towards it. But it works. A thousand grit is absolutely fine. And think just for a minute. When you do clear lacquer over artwork, you haven't keyed that up before you spray it, have you? That goes straight over the flat bodywork with no key whatsoever. And it works absolutely well. So anyway, it works. as long as it works, that's why I'm going to do it. I'm not going to say this is advice or guidance. Don't do But the, the fact of the matter is, is there's a time and a period when you spray the paint... 
for instance, when you do artwork and that, you spray you spray the lacquer on it pretty quickly. You don't wait a week or this has been sat here for weeks. You don't wait weeks for it to fully cure and harden up and then go and spray on top of it. Number two is we're talking about polishing it with thousand grit paper. And with look at your surface. This isn't artwork, is it? Well, it is in a way, but for other reasons. Do what I do, do what works for you. This is what works for me. Anyway, I'm show That's not the way the universe works. You fool. Well, are you going to say this for your welds and how you draw parallel, don't draw parallel lines or how you don't measure stuff for everything that you do? Do you know what? Taking a radiator off when the water's hot, it works for me. Well, it didn't. It burned you, you div. And get on with it. In fact, I understand, right? If you've got a point, like I, someone might turn around to me and say, oh, Matt, I'll weld... I'll, I'll weld fairings back together, broken fairings with um, ABS and a bit of acetone. I don't like doing that method. I'm going to demonstrate why, or I already have. Depends when these videos come out. I don't like that, and I'll demonstrate why. So I have my arguments, and I will present them. Then other people can present what they say. Now, it's a bit one-sided because I'm going to do physical demonstrations, and that's how I would do it. Then someone, you know, they've only got the text in, you know, they've only got the, the ability to type comments. But I do sit there and say, well, what would you do otherwise? You know what I mean? Like, there's, there's, there's ways to skin cats and all the rest of it. And it's the end result that matters. But what I say by the end result is that I will weld this stuff together, just say using the Dremel method, beveling it, literally sit there and spend some time doing it. And then we'll see how easy that is to snap versus I'll snap it and then I'll get one of the bits that's snapped off and see if we can snap it, you know, a, a, a virgin piece that isn't broken uh, of exactly the same material and see how similar they are. Then what I'll do is, because now I've got that virgin bit and snapped it in two, we'll try the acetone method. We're just melting up some, what is it? And look at stuff like, see what kind of mess it makes, see this, how easy is it to do, how is it not to do? etc 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 and then compare them and then you can make a conclusion at the end of the day i can still turn around and say i like my method better however my method isn't as strong just say or i like my method better i win because mine's a lot less messy and it's stronger but i'll only say that once we do the testing you can at least partially demonstrate it now it's not some sample size of ten thousand repeated this that and the other cold weather testing blah, blah, blah. it's just not anecdotal but a sample size of a couple and from the way I'm doing it versus what someone else might say. But at least you've got to, you can't just say, oh, I've never had a problem with it, trust me. Oh, okay then. You've got to give some something more than that. And where did this vice stand come from? I've never seen that before. Hmm. You get what I mean? It's just like, oh, I've never had a problem. Dude, you've only just started using Tough Black. And number two is, it is a problem. We've literally got evidence for it. <laughs> oh, well. Oh, when he actually does succumb to his terrible heart condition. Penny, can I have that bench? I want that bench. I would treat it like the Holy Grail. I would probably chop the legs off it and just keep the tabletop and just put it on the wall in the workshop with some lights. I'd literally, it'd be like a shrine. <laughs> I'm not kidding that for a word. I'd be like, this is where all that bullshit was spouted. This is where all that crap stuff was made on top of this worktop. Literally, we'll have pilgrimages where people can turn up and just give the blessings. Or, or take selfies with it, whatever. What are you feeling it for? You can't shape with a thousand. You'd be there for about a good five years. You know, he sprayed, this is the other thing, he sprays it with all these layers. If I give you something that's been powder coated, I'll give you all that sandpaper, 400 grit sandpaper. Let's see how long it takes you to rub through flat surfaces. It takes forever. God, it's tough stuff. It really is tough, and if it's black, it's black. But he goes through this paint awfully easily, like stupidly easy. I know that's meant to be the, I think he's meant to say that's the wheel paint, but I'm sure it's Simona, is it Simone's? Simon eyes. I always forget. Mmm, crusty cardboard. I want you to show us the, the reflectiveness. Mm. 
Why are you stuffing it with crap? If... Forget it. Forget it. Forget it. Oh, the precision. You do realise he's got to split the whole thing black, so it doesn't matter if he does this or not. He's gone through to the fiberglass there, look. Jesus Christ. Tat rags. Now we're giving up on tat rags now. Uh, just one thing I learned from watching Milo Garage all those years ago was... It's on YouTube, it's not years ago, you can watch it right now. Just to rehearse the operation all around the job to make sure you can get all around... Why is he plugging Milo all of a sudden? Is it his like, anniversary of his death or something? Yeah. Full access all around the workpiece, all around the bench, not anything to trip over. Nowhere this is going to hit anything. If you've got a hose, then obviously you've got enough hose and you're not going to run out and can't get close enough to do all that sort of stuff. Well, people are like, stupid, Del. Maybe you are. It's important. So once you start painting, it's one operation from start to finish, coat after coat, with no stopping, to try and move it and realign things. Doesn't matter. As he said, how long it takes to set up your painting operation, even if it takes you a whole day and you have to come at it the next day to paint, doesn't matter. Once you start painting, it can only be one operation right the way through, and I found that really works for me. So we'll do that again today. Everything's worked. It's all nicely lined up. Everything's worked. You haven't done anything. That's all completely different. You've done what you've done before. This is how many times has he done this? Grease now. I'm going to leave it for about another half an hour just for all the vapours of that acetone to just evaporate away. I'll come at it. We'll do a first tech coat. It's a shame I can't see the clock. Just can't see the clock. Basically, there's no hands that are between 12 and, and 6. So is that going to be the time? He could have filmed that at any time. Actually, yeah, you see that he's lying. Because as he's talking, you can see. Or maybe that is the hour hand. Now, I'm going to leave it for about another half an hour just for all the vapours of that acetone to just evaporate away. I'll come at it, we'll do a first tack coat. No, because that, that, that minute hand isn't there. Can you see the minute hand? Yeah, so it's between, oh, it might be just. That's also not half an hour, that's 55 minutes. <laughs> Whatever, doesn't matter. And the, the acetone flashed off as you were talking shite. Oh, that famous tack coat. I remember this should be perfectly smooth now. We can't tell yet. That's it, put your hands over the top of it. That was like five minutes. Well, there's a bit of crap here. There's a bit of crap there. There's a bit of crap there. I can see that big bits of crap there. There's like some striations there. I don't know if that's running. That would be a weird direction to run. There's crap all over it, look. But I'm more interested in like that. That's a dimple. That's a recess. That's not a, something on top of it. That's a lower bit. Rubbed it down completely. Perfect, smooth. Perfect. Like sagging. A little heavier this time. Oh, the runs. Oh, there's cloths everywhere, look. It's 
you got to remember, if you think about what Del Boy's garage is, right? Del Boy's garage is we take stuff apart, I replace all the fluids, and then I spray paint stuff and then put it back together. That's all he does. That's what this is all about. It says fabrication. No, right? So <laughs> that's the majority of what he does is spray, rattle canning shit. He's got a compressor. Why don't you have a little tent? You can have the little shower tents where people get in them and, uh, you know, what do you call it now? They go to a campsite and they put a little tent up and they get inside so your missus can get her tits out and get changed and then she comes back out again. It's like a little shower cubicle, but it's a tent. You can buy them for like 20, 30 quid. Automatic pop-up ones. It's all neoprene, not neoprene. It's all, you know, it's all plastic, waterproof plastic, whatever it is. You know, that kind of like weaved plastic stuff. Whatever the hell it is. What tents are made out of. And you could set that up, take that down, set up. You get in there, right? Stick your head through with a paper suit on. Stick your head and your hand through. Or if you get a bigger one, I'll get two and put them together or whatever. And you can spray stuff hanging from a hook. You make the frame strong enough or you hang it on the outside. And then you spray it with a little... You can get like a high-velocity, low-pressure gun, a HV... LP jobby, but you can get small ones, right? It's got a compressor. Just blow some paint on it. Or even use the rattle cans. It'd stop all the shit falling on it. But no. Because he does shit jobs when he goes to a spray booth. And he doesn't think to himself. Do you know what? I dress it like this in the spray booth. And I do it. It's because if he puts a paper suit on, everyone will go, ah, you see, you see, Del, Matt was right, wasn't he? And he can't stand that. He would much rather do a shit job and zoom in on it and show the world that he's doing a shit job and he's not getting any better out of sheer arrogance and determination not to look like a Muppet by looking like a Muppet. Oh, wipe the nozzle with a bloody cloth, you div. Oh, he's going on heavy there. Jesus Christ. It's not orange peel. It's just an orange. It's a black, mouldy orange. Wow. It's because his can's cold. Like, he keeps on going about how warm it is in the workshop. The can is cold. Because as it evaporates, as 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 it vaporizes, as it comes out of the can, it, it it's evaporating, so it's taking heat from it. So the can's just getting colder and colder. This is why cans get colder, you hand. But it's just getting colder and colder and colder, and it's just it's lethargic. It's like really viscous, and that stuff's terrible for it. The tough black stuff, it's like tar. Lock it round here. It's gonna run like a good one, and there's a nice little stipple bit where it's re reacted with something Let's get more of it on what, what, what the hell was the there's a, there's a bit up there there's a bit here he literally picks up the whole camera on its tripod more just keep on going man See what he does is right. Is he does this thing? This is this is how his mind works. I think it's more than he does. So you'll have this. You'll have this surface right, like this. Where's my? There we go. You'll have this surface, like this, and then he'll have a cornflake. Right, you'll have this cornflake. This bit of shite that just sits on here like this. Like that. And then what he does is he thinks, right, what I'm going to do is I'm going to lay a layer of paint on here like this. Like that. And then he thinks, oh, well, it's all right because the paint will just... It's like you do with it when you're, you're bored and you've got a biro. 
And it's like, I'll lay another layer on like this and it'll smooth it out eventually and it'll disappear. If I keep on putting paint on it, it'll just do this. But the thing is, the problem with this idea is that more than 50% of this paint is the solvent and propellant that's in there. Right? So what happens is, is that it shrinks. But not only that is, the real problem is... Oh, I can't do it like that. The real problem is that the paint layer is this thick, all said and done. Right? It's really thin. And then there's another layer of it. And then another layer of it. And this is probably not even this is probably not even not good to scale. But you get what I mean? You put four layers on it, once it shrinks, it's like this. These are the layers. So when you your final layer with all these other layers on top of it is like this. It's like that level. Well, I can see that, it's massive. So when it shrinks, it it, it basically just it stands out proud. Because it, it what he's spraying on here is bloated up. When all them solvents flash off, it shrinks. But not only that is, these paint layers are nothing. They're measured in tens of microns maximum. All them layers, all them layers will be 100 microns max together. And it's like 100 microns. That's a tenth of a millimetre. And if his thing's 20 microns, uh, 200 microns tall, his little bit of dirt... Then it's just, you're still gonna see it's gonna stick out. Oh god! And like he says, because it's satin, he can't touch it. So why didn't he do it out of gloss? Then he could be able to buff it out and not look like such a tit. Oh, I can see it sagging there. Wow! Do you see that? I hope you can all see this, but there. There's all these lines in the light. Wow, that's all sagging bad. Is it? Is it? Is it? Why are you avoiding it? There, look. You can see it, it's the it's the the lines on the garage door. But you can see how they're all bending, and they're all bending because the paint's sinking. Quick flash! Look! Look at these! Look at these bits of shit. He's doing this to hide it. Look. Perfect. But what's this? It hasn't gone away. What's this here? It's more prominent. Guys put so much on Jesus Christ alive. Just wow. There's this shit everywhere. This is the thing, the closer you get to getting it perfect, the harder it is. A penis, I mean. Oh, that's it, move it, that's a good idea. What a bell end. To celebrate, fire a party popper at it. <laughs> oh, there's a bit in the middle there, there's a bit, what is that? There, right in the corner, look at that big, look, these bits here, what are these? That's just where the pit, the pins, it's, it's, it's not sticky, it's basically re been repelled. Wow, this is shite, this is probably one of the worst ones. A bit at the back then as well. Okay, awesome. Happy with the result on that. Um, managed to strike the balance between not too dry and not too wet. No runs or sags or anything. Bullshit. And no dry, grainy patches either. That's floated out nicely with no ill effects. I'm really, really chuffed. That is at least as good as the tank. So I know that it will dry and it will it will mat out at least as well as the tank has, and that'll be great because when it goes on. Look how wet that is. It's satin or got matte, whatever it is. Look how shiny that is. It's been like half an hour since. Perfectly. Now that's it. Once that's on, it is a case of handlebars. I've got to change those plastic fluid pots for the brake and clutch. They're going on some nice alloy ones. That look really trick. Then it's put the nose cone on. Why the lights in? Why the indicators in? Why the backlight in? Why the horn in? Put the cable in the speedo. MOT. Is it that close? Damn. I think it is. Honestly, I think we're that close. Probably two, three weeks at the most, and this will be on the road. Oh, I bet he can't wait to get shot of it. Road. I really, 
Really hope so. There we are. And also I've got another little lathe project coming in, which I'm really looking forward to. Thanks for all your kind words on the last lathe project. That was amazing. It did go down very well with its owner. She absolutely loved it. It's very grateful indeed. And the next one is something a little bit more difficult because I've got to work to specification. This time's different. I've got a proper set of drawings with sizes on it and everything, and I've got to make it exact. And that's where I think the challenge is going to be. And I'm really looking forward to it. So there we are. I'm going to update the board. Thank you for watching, for all your kind support. That's going to have 48 hours. And I'm going to leave you with the drawing overnight, which I think you loved the last time. So out comes the time lapse. And let's see how it goes. See you next time. Time lapse lap last time. Oh, you can see it there. Look, look at it. Oh, it's beautiful. Oh, you see how it's shrinking and bits appear. Oh, look at that. Oh, it's heavy there, won't it? Look, right in the pits. What is that? Per perfect, that's what that is. I just want to see how many hours it was. And a half again. Oh my god. Next. What's the next one? Master cylinders. Ooh. Ooh. Oh, we're so close. We're so close. We're not charging again, are we? He hasn't done it's a lithium battery, he hasn't done anything. Hi, right, good morning, welcome back. Okay, back to the fight build today. I think the paintwork is done for one lifetime, don't you? Happy to call that done, underline it until we get to the artwork in the new year. Handlebars today, I want to change some of this furniture and get rid of these plastic furniture pots. I've never liked these really, even on a sports bike, there's a better solution. I do prefer, wherever possible, the cast in alloy pots. Why is there a better solution? It's called lighter. I showed in the last video, I've got a pair of those to fit on the bike today and they are definitely going to be a major improvement to a set of naked handlebars. The two new master cylinders I'm going to fit, the brake and clutch, they have switches, obviously in the new ones, the two tangs that stick out to put the wiring plugs on. That side will fit straight on because the loom gives me two plugs to put on. This side is not, it's a solid plug. So I'm going to snip that off, rewire the loom out here, take some of that wiring out, so there's a little bit of messing around to do with that, so I can plug it in. But once that's done, all plugged in, plumbed in, juiced up and working with the switches working, then that's absolutely fine, then I can move on to other stuff. But I'm not gonna bite off more than I can chew. I wanna do a good job of this because the handlebars, well, that's your, that's your dash, that's your cockpit, isn't it? So let's get that right first. No, a cockpit isn't a dash. Let's see how far we get. Where that. do you think the word pit comes from? Like, it's like pinholes. <laughs> I'd like something archaic, Bob, please, for 10 points. I'd like to get rid of the, the Japanese design stuff. I'd like to replace it with some Chinese guff, please. Anything for the weekend, sir? Clean it out like that, you just get rid of it. For some reason, we have to look back at the battery. Some reason. Are they st 
still on it now. Click. Oh, good man. Right into a cast alley block. Go for it. Sunny, sunny breaks, who cares? Look at the tough black on all of this. This is all tough black. Look at it all coming off. Hasn't been anywhere yet. Oh, it's chipping everywhere. Hasn't been anywhere yet. You brush against it, chips off. Oh, now we're clicking. Well, you were far too tight anyway, you div. Didn't even turn. Mmm, quality. too easy okay I just want to preempt a criticism I'm probably gonna get if anybody's thinking you should bleed that now both sides on the rest of it there's no need the air was just no 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 you definitely do need to you've forced it in God's sake it's here I took that off held them out here there's air in the top of the banjos yeah loads of air loads of fluid came out probably down to there maybe for instance or you know who knows but there's plenty of air there but it's all at the top so when you put the new fluid in, just bump it back and forwards, and as you hold the lever in, it will let the air bubble out. So that looks like you, you're going really far back there, Del. That's the sponginess of the lever. Top, there's no need to pump that down the system and bleed it out through the calipers, risking trapping air bubbles lower down. You're not going to trap them. It's designed... It's... Ending up with a spongy brake operation, which is not cool. That if looks it's... spongy to me. It's solid to start with. All you need to do, put it on, pump in and out once it's done up and the air will come out the top. That's why I put the camera above so you can see it happen in real time. And there are tiny champagne bubbles now, nothing much. Almost oh, it's none. Like it's nearly going back to the bloody lever. It's back a to the bars. time consuming thing, probably takes about 15 minutes, but eventually all the air is gone. And that is absolutely rock solid lever. But it's not, I can see you squishing it. Totally chuffed to bits with that. It's now, incompressible, you div. You got braided brand new lines. I've got to do, top it up, put the cap on, do the other side. You've got to grab your brake, it's like, eh, oh, eh. oh, there we go, that's solid, because everything, <laughs> forget it, forget, I don't care. He's doing other people's bikes. <laughs> Lazy bastard. No, that, that's the original, actually. That's the original. Oh, it's not on the original on the top of that yoke, though. That's all been chipped off, look. <laughs> uh, shit black, not tough black. These forks, he did these. It's all chipped off at the bottom. It's all chipped off at the top. He scratched this loads of times. This brand new. These these risers, I think they're from tech. Brand new. Who cares? Who cares? Who cares what it looks like? Five grand and it's yours. <laughs> better looking than ever those little plastic pots could possibly have been chopped well, no because the plastic pots are just hanging around because you don't have any brackets from because you got rid of them the bits something else i really like about them is that they're flat and level with the bars it's not like that it looks stupid it looks old when you look at so many people who go and buy these second hand 
off the breakers, off eBay, master cylinders from Bandit 1200, GSX i11, any number of bikes that have got the two bikes he knows about. Got cast master cylinders. What you get normally is these pots will end up slanting inwards when you put them on drag bars. <gasps> oh, remember you did that with the, you remember you did the absolute reverse with the higher boost and didn't realise how much of a div you were been. It's weird that that bike hasn't gone anywhere, isn't it? Because most bars come up and go down for comfort, therefore the caps are nice and flat. The minute you put that to a drag bar, that cap slants inwards. And I've seen it so many times when you look at bikes that have had drag bars fitted, you look at these caps and they slant down in. It looks as bad as the plastic pots in my view, and that's... It looks as bad as the plastic pots. It looks as bad as the plastic pots. Right, in his view. Right. Right. Right, let's have a look, Del. What does this look like? Oh, remember the barbecue booster. Oh, it's so good. It's so good. What do your bars look like, Del? Yeah, so these bars are angled down, and you can see the flat. But, flat bar conversion. The second video. This was two years ago, so he's changed his mind. But he got COVID and it changed his mind. So, right at the end, you'll see that he's going to say... So he puts flat bars on this. So all I've got to do is those rubber bushings that are in there, I've got to copy those. I'll machine them up on the lathe out of Delrin plastic. That will make them nice and stiff. Extended clutch and brake lines. It's got to be there then. Fourth video in this series. So, Dad, what do these look like? Right, there we are. A simple. Wait there, wait there. Here we go. Here we go. You know, clean them up. Like at all? Nah. New screws in them? Nah. Oh, look at them. Oh, they don't look stupid. Not only that is they're actually really wrong because of the level, but whatever. Who cares? Right, there we are. A simple enough task. And as you can see, that syringe contraption is the best money I've ever spent in recent years. It really is. It just takes one time, one effort, one squirt, you filled the system. So <laughs> One squirt and she's pregnant. Imagine all those hours that you might have spent trying to plumb up dry hoses. Dry hoses, it's a big quantity of air and the normal bleeding procedure that we know and love doesn't work. So because you're just retarded. Simply because there's too much air there and it squeezes in and out like a big spring and it just... It's called pressure, you see. When you squeeze it and you undo the thing, it goes... And then it equalises. And then that air that goes out, the fluid replaces. Because there's a momentum, there's an inertia to the flow. And gravity, weirdly enough. Doesn't then produce any suction to drag more fluid down. So you don't end up bleeding. It just takes forever. This way, first time, every time. One squeeze, fills it up to there. Oh, this is also a black tank that looks like shite. <laughs> and that's it. It's bang on, first time. No mess, no fuss. That sounds really done now i'll put a link to that in the description underneath along with the link to the hoses if you're looking for brake hoses for your bike we moto will make them to order everything i said earlier on now you will do this kind of job if you're going to fit ape hangers you'll need longer brake hoses if you're going to fit touring bars and a top yoke conversion to your touring motorcycle or you've got something i don't know like a zzr 1400 and it's a bit too far forward for you, you can buy top yoke conversions like this and you trim your screen back. Well, again, you're gonna need longer hoses and longer cables. Well, all of that hopefully will help you if you're doing that on your bike. Now, in the next one, cables. I Do you wanna talk about this at all, no? Do you wanna talk about why it looks like shite? No? No? No, I can't see any, oh, he's gonna talk some shite here. Can all squirt out around the thread. Oh, he's talking rubbish as usual. So, oh, hang about, hang about, hang about, hang about. This might be interesting because... See, there's a, there's a, there's a point on there. What was the tip for? Strange. Right. 
bleed valves. When you're bleeding a system in reverse like this, and I'm forcing fluid into the bleed valve, quite often it can all squirt out around the thread because it's not a very tight fit. When you crack these at eighth of a turn so that you can force the fluid in there, then obviously that's enough for them to wiggle around. Feel it, next time you're there doing this, just get hold of it, give it a wiggle, you'll see it moves about. If that moves about, that means there's a gap. And if there's the gap, as you're forcing that fluid in, which I'm gonna do, it all squirts out the side and makes a right old mess. There's a simple way around it. And it also helps you when you cut those last little strings of bubbles, when you're bleeding in the other direction, when you're doing normal brake bleeding, you get those constant bubbles that won't go away. You're drawing the air down the side with a thread. This is a problem. Bleed valves really aren't that well sealed. The minute you open them, they draw air in, or if you're forcing the fluid in, they'll squirt it out the sides. So a great way to do it. That's and the whole do point, is you force in. The air can't get in if fluid has been forced out. It's with why, it's, it's how they work. Clutch here is this stuff. The old PTFE plumber's tape. Oh my God, putting PTFE on brakes. You know, if you ever got caught doing that by any governing body, they'd probably shoot you out of a cannon towards the sun. Wrap a couple of turns of that around the thread and that seals it. It seals it for me now as I force the fluid into it. It won't right. Vesuvius everywhere. And at the same time, if you're bleeding in the other direction, trying to get the air out of there, it'll mean you won't draw it down the sides of the thread. And also, when you finally nip it up and the job's finished, well, that's not going to corrode in place if it's got a little bit of that tape around it, is it? It's going to stay there. It doesn't corrode in place, you div. Nice and safe, nice and sealed. When you want to get it free, it'll just come undone nicely. A simple fix that costs next to nothing. Dal puts PTFE on his brake pad, on his brake Problem cal solved. On his brake calipers. Ain't odd, is it? You fucking dickhead. See, there we go, visual for you. What a dick. And you're winding it the wrong way. Because <laughs> the tape's like that, and as soon as you turn it, the thread pushes against it and unwinds it. God, it, it literally, it just, it, 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 it's like even guessing he can't do stuff right. Jesus. Wet. But there you go. So he thinks it's stupid. Right? He thinks it's stupid until he does it later on. When you look at bikes that have had drag bars fitted, you look at these caps and they slant down in. It looks as bad as the plastic pots in my view, and that's why I put these on, because they're dead flat, they fit absolutely flat with the bar, and that's quite an unusual shape, not something you could find easily. I got these at Wimoto, I found them in their stock list, and they were originally for a Honda CB750. Oh, they're, so they're, they're on a Honda CB750 then. To stress was this is a twin disc master cylinder. It's very important if you've got twin discs to make sure you've got a twin disc master cylinder so it pumps enough fluid from the pump down to the big fat calipers. You don't know how obviously brake systems work, but whatever. Down below, don't use a single disc master cylinder on a twin disc setup. That could be dangerous. How make you tell the difference, Dale? Make sure you use the right one, and that is it. These are absolutely perfect. They're safe for the job. That one's a little shinier than that one. It's not the end of the world, I'll just polish that one up to match. Simple, that job done. Anyway, the next thing is the indicators in the end. So let's get into that. Oh. Thank God that battery's fully charged. I was really worried. He's just seen this somewhere. This is a, a, old as the hills, is this little trick, but he's just seen it somewhere. Why didn't he do it in the first place? Why is he just doing it now? If he does a, oh, a little quick tip, look at the frame. Oh, what's happened here? It's the tough black. Look at the frame here. What's happened? It's the tough black. <laughs> oh, yes. The other thing is, well, it's dot tight and your terminal's too tight. The blocks, a lot of these blocks, or some of these blocks on some batteries, those actual terminal blocks that you clamp on, not tighten through, the little blocks are um, zinc-covered steel, but little nuts, the square nuts. The actual blocks themselves are actually lead a lot of the times. Oh, half the times. These actual, you know, the, 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 the turret is actually lead, so you've got to be careful. You don't have to literally cinch the actual crap out of them. Weird, fully talk specs, it's amazing. I think for that size thread, I think it's like 12 or 16 newton meters. It, a butt check, door, take my word for it, Jesus Christ. It's using 
scissors as wire strippers. Cosses, skills, mad skills. Is that is he using speaker wire? <laughs> Oh, he is, yeah. Good lad. Ain't hard, is it? Spade connectors. Jesus Christ. Like shitty, cheap spade connectors. He's literally got a bit of speaker wire. How does he know his... Here's a good question. If they're LEDs, how does he know his polarity? Like, he drags that speaker wire through, but it's speaker wire. How does he know which one he's done? Oh, that's flashing my e relay. Right, that's them wording. One more thing. Let's slow him down a bit. Oh, do you want that not being black would annoy the shit out of me. <laughs> Remember the dickhead light. <laughs> Oh my god. So good. Look at it. Look at it. Is it bobbling? Is it rusting already? Oh yeah, what is all that? Look at the inside of this. Look. Oh, it's like celastic sheep on it. Good. It's not really shit at all. Uh, oh, that's how you set up your, your headlight aim. You just shine it at the wall because he, he knows just by looking because he can do angles. We know what he's like for his sextant eyes. Fucking hell. What a Kent. Right, from... This angle vision. Why did he? Why did he? What is, I'd, I'd love to have all his, his, his jump cuts. What the actual stuff was. It says right, and then he jump cuts the whole thing. It's like he must have been talking some right shite for him to notice. Right, from this angle visually, and from this angle, I think you'll agree it's absolutely super. He, he proper jump cut the shit. That wasn't intentional. There's was some bollocks there. It was mid sentence. Oh, I'm so chuffed with that. These look way better than plastic pots would have ever looked. I love the fact that the banjos go on the front rather than on the sides of them. As before, that's given more space here. For oh, your machine gun. I've made a, a gap which looks a little bit nicer. So improvements all the way around. Absolutely chuffed a bit. It was a big investment, over a hundred pounds for these. But for what they are, you'd have paid four times that from the main dealer if you bought genuine ones. They're probably better, that's why. If you bought second-hand ones, it's a lottery. Are they going to need rebuilding? Even if they do, like I said earlier, they'll have that slant to them. They'll never look as correct. It depends as if you get them from... Oh, that's it, forget it, forget it, forget it. They do. So absolutely... Come on, we're nearly there. So you chuck with that. The whole front end is now done. I can write that off. Light's working. You can write it all off. Side light, headlight, main uh, and dip. Horn, indicators idiot lights, everything. The whole front end is signed off. Now that means the next one will be the rear end. But that one, once it's completely finished curing, wire all the lights in, and could it be that close to a ride? Could it be? Dare we say it out loud? Okay, thank you for watching. Take it easy, ride safe. We'll see you for the next one. It looks like, look, look at it. What is all this? Why has he got acne? 
Why is that hole? The hole's too big. Look, it's not lined up at all. It's all shite. Look at it all. Look, it's just be oh, beautiful. These levers are brand new and they've already got scratches in them. And this side, look, it's got pimples everywhere. It looks like why? Look, there's a, a big, again, big burr. The hole is far too big. The fastener only just covers most of the hole, not all of it. I want to see down low what that bobbling on here was. The tough black's holding up nicely. What a load of shite. Wow. It looks like, I don't know, an Easter egg and a Smurf had a kid. It's like, wow, eight and a half hours for that. Eight and a half hours. Hope that makes sense. And we're nearly there. Nearly there. And I'll see you in a bit.